the Court of Appeal sitting in Lagos has affirmed the judgment of a Lagos State High Court, which sentenced Nollywood actor Ola Rawaju James, popularly called Babai Jesha, to five years' imprisonment for sexually assaulting a 14 year old minor. The appellate court in this led ju judgment by Justice Fola Shadi Ojo presided found the appellant Babai Jesha guilty on count four and five where he was accused of indecently torturing a minor and sexually assaulted her. Other members of the panel, Justice Abdullahi Bayaro and Justice Paul Bassi, agreed with the lead judgment. The Lagos State Government had prosecuted Babai Jesha on a six-count charge of indecent treatment of a child, sexual assault, attempted sexual assault by penetration and sexual assault by penetration. In our judgment, the trial judge, Justice Olua Toin Taiwo, now retired of the Ikeja Domestic Violence and Sexual Offences Court on July 14, 2022, sentenced Babai Jesha to five years imprisonment over the sexual assault of a minor. Now, um, this is coming um, from Rivers, from Lagos State, rather. Um, they are talking about this man popularly called Babai Jesha. He has been sentenced to five years imprisonment uh, for assaulting a minor, defiling a minor. I, I, I believe there is um, more to the sentence of rape or assault to a minor. I, I'm coming to you, Barista Adams, as saying, uh, wh what can you say about this, uh, <laughs> at the judgment anyway? Mm, because some persons were saying that this is it's very small, um, a heinous crime like this, and they are sentencing him to five years imprisonment, that they trivialize and, uh, that. Well, I think uh, a lot of Nigerians, mm. you know, see justice from their perspective. Okay. And that is why, you see, I never blame those who interpret or see justice from their own angle, because... Uh, a popular scholar and philosopher Jeremy Bentham, mm. you know, wrote a, wrote a you know a book that talks about uh, justice called the principles of open justice. Mm. So uh, justice is anywhere. When you look at it, you just say, oh, why did they do this? Why did they do that? Nobody knows the nitty gritty of that particular uh, matter except lawyers who represented them and also lawyers who are trained you know, to look at things like this and uh, explain why decisions were taken. But the general public does not care because what they read in this is they say, no, they should have been given 20, 20 years imprisonment. Whereas the particular uh, law and the offense, punitive measures for that offense, mm -hmm. does not prescribe 20 years you know, as a maximum. Okay. It gives maybe five years you know, as a minimum, then 14 years uh, you know, as, as a maximum. And the judge has the discretion when sentencing, he has the discretion to, you know, operate between that five years minimum to the maximum. You understand the okay. point now? Okay. Now, that is why it, it, is, it, it is like that. Many people are looking at it and saying, no, you must be, you have to put it. Yes, of course, I agree with them that that has to take place. But the judge or the panel of appeal that took that particular decision to reaffirm the five years must have gone through the laws, you know, of sentencing and saying that, uh, see, this is the minimum we can give, and this is the maximum we can give. The second one is that, if you look at what happened now, how many counts do you have? It means that we had more than four counts. Well, it said count four and count five. So it means count one, two, three were, you know, struck out, or they were, you know, dismissed, as the case may be. And now had, you know, count four and five, based on the evidences before the court. You understand the point now? Okay. That is why he was now heard based on court, uh, count uh, four and five in the charge. As the case may be, these are things that need to be explained to those who are not lawyers and those members of the public. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to the holistic view of this you know, uh, particular affirmation of the lower court's uh, judgment, I think yesterday, you know, as the case may be, I am very, very happy. It may not have satisfied the families of the, the, the juvenile or the kid, mm -hmm. you know, to the extent that they wanted him to be punished, you know, maximally yes. to have 14 years or even death sentence, mm -hmm. as the case may be. Mm -hmm. But the law as it is, is not just, you know, punitive, but also reformatory, as the case may be, you know. So if you look at the Baba Ejisha case, I liken it to the Arukeli's case. 
in the U.S. Okay. The reason why R. Kelly got you know, life, life sentence was because he did that and was reprimanded in the first instance to one or two, you know, at that time. Okay. But in spite of the warnings, he still continued in that particular trade. He still continued that particular indecency, you know, trying to, you know, use the word rape girls and uh, defy them as the case may be. So the, the, the system and the court felt that, oh, this man is not fit, you know, to be in the society amongst juveniles and young children growing up. That was how they had to extend it and give that maximum, maximum sentence of mm -hmm. a life imprisonment. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Baba Jisha case, it's a lesson. I think it's novel somewhat in the sense that for the first time, I am seeing a superstar. When I say a superstar, open and close. Before, we thought that superstars were above the board in Nigeria here. Yeah. That if you are a superstar, maybe you are a movie maker, like himself is a movie star. Let me use the word say movie star. Mm -hmm. Well known, popular in our consciousness and you know in the uh, 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 space, the public space, especially the southwestern people, uh, their, their space. Now, if you can put him, let him go through the procedures of you know criminal you know trial, and he has been found wanting, jailed in the first instance, then appeal court confirming that particular sentence again, I think we say step in the right direction for me. Okay. You understand the point? So okay. let him learn his lessons. Because I have seen, this is going to be a lesson to those people that I have seen, on my own, I want them. I see people, they go, you know, uh, uh, do things with juvenile. For instance, uh, I'm just uh, just one minute, I'll, I'll round up. For instance, I, I was in a, a particular, you know, uh, hospitality industry somewhere in River State. And I saw a grown man that I believe that man should have some kids in the house walked and sauntered in to where we were with kids that I believe they were in their 15, 16s. Hmm. And they were enjoying themselves. I had to walk there because I couldn't bear it. I couldn't bear moral, you know, codes. Because I was brought up based on that moral bad code. Hmm. I had to go and mean and say, excuse me, sir, what is going on here? I don't like this. Are these your kids? He said that, in fact, he challenged me, and I said, if you do that, I'll call the police. And when, it, when, it, when I did that to him, he calmed down, and he walked away. We should resent people like that. Yes. We should, you know, put it in the know. And that is why I have advocated. We have been, when I, I delivered some statement on this particular delinquency, and whatever people do, that the law must be maximally made. That is number one, is that. All hospitality industry, whatever its case may be, the owners will be held responsible if a juvenile is defiled in one of their rooms or in the premises or present of their hotels, as the case may be. That will serve as a deterrent. So that people, as you are coming in, hotel owner I am, I know there's a law. I'll tell you, oh God, please go away. I don't think this girl is up to 15 years old. You have to prove it to me that she is above the day. You sign something for me before I allow you to come to my hotel room. You don't allow them to come to your hotel because they are paying you money, as case may be. So mm -hmm. it's going to serve as a deterrent. Mm -hmm. And more. Mm -hmm. Let me not conquer the, the time space given okay. to me. I have oh. to rest it there, but it's a, uh, okay. it's a vexatious one. Yeah. And I, I think uh, we have to do more. Uh, a very, a very, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's really quite um, bad in the public decency okay now um you, what's your reaction on this well the truth remains that uh, the law has taken its course mm. and it is for the purpose of serving as a deterrent it's not based on the level of uh, what's the lengthy uh, the duration of imprisonment like he mentioned mm -hmm. Uh, law of also, also for reformative, like he mentioned. Um, that is why they change our uh, prison center here in River State to correctional center. It is where people will go and their memory, their certain whatever they do know before, will not that is evil, will not have to fade away, giving chance for what is good based on what they have suffered. Mm -hmm. So I think that having convicted him, number one, is a welcome development because it still boils down to the influence of drug. People, the actors, they are also part of the people promoting this drugging we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, the stars, the superstars, they are the people promoting drug. Now, if you are not under the influence of drug, how will you go and defy an underage girl, knowing that that girl is underage? 
So, you know, from the stories we had that when you take that drug, you'll be very high. I don't know how you could. I don't know what they mean by being high. Mm. So, it means that mm -hmm. it takes you out of the realm of being human mm. to inhuman. Mm -hmm. And that is why you can treat people inhumanly. That is why you can do what the law may call inhuman treatment. Because it is inhuman to defile a girl. And you cannot also do that with the normal eyes. Mm. So except you are high in quotes. Mm. So when you are so high, like they may describe it, mm. you can do anything. And that is also the same way they do use to shoot for those who are assassins. and all. So it's everything boils down to this drug we actually talked about. So what we are saying is that the court has done very well. If okay. he comes out and he continues, then he may also achieve something higher than that. Because justice is a, a three-way traffic. Okay. He also give, do what is justice to the state, the victim, the, even the accused. I think to him now, the justice he has got is that the duration is not too long. That is the justice on his own part. Exactly. Yes, and for the family, the victim right. is that he was convicted. Mm -hmm. And where for the state is that the law has taken its course. And I think it's a work on development. All right. Thank okay, you. Okay, um, I appreciate that one. Um, uh, there's a talent point you made about Sir Adam Sassen. Uh, you were talking about those people who stay in the hotel, the hoteliers, and yes. that they should question those young people because even me, I've really witnessed uh, a situation whereby about the 14, 15 years of age, Age goes, you know, walking into a hotel, uh, is, you know, in search of a man, and you begin to ask, so what is the, what's the relationship? How can you reconcile that? Okay, I believe that there is more to that, and they also should, you know, make a scrutiny of those girls, or you know, coming into the hotel, trying to ascertain their age in order to prevent this abuse, this child abuse, and um, and um, defilement as well. That is, you see. That, that is what I was expecting, mm. you know, the Minister of Women Affairs yes. mm -hmm. to be doing, and also our legislators, yes. both at the local level and the national level. Okay. Because these things are prevalent. Let me tell you what happened in the R. Kelly case. You see, R. Kelly was not just taken up and arrested on it from his house. It was based on reports okay. by those who saw what happened, corroborated by, the, by the, the little girl or girls that he's had all these things with, as case may be. So we should have a society, you know, that has some fabrics or moral standard. Mm. You understand now? Yeah. What am I talking about? Laws, you know, mainly originate from the moral aspect of uh, our living. Mm. That is why you find out that the National Assembly, the House of Assembly, has to, you know, put into, bring a motion before their body to say things of this thing that once you have an underage in your cover and you are bringing to any of this hospitality, whatever the case may be, that these are the things you have to do. I mean, if we have such happening now, then hoteliers and their owners can come out and confront them or even alert the police okay. when such that happens. All right. So for now, they cannot do that. They can, okay. Because there's no, there's no particular law mm -hmm. saying that uh, when a 14-year-old or whatever comes you know, to the hotel that mm -hmm. uh, you can send the customer but they, but they out. they can use their discretion. They can use their use discretion. Their that discretion is not moral. It's okay. not illegal. Yeah, of okay. course, yeah. I agree. So that that is it, it, also follows, it also follows when mm -hmm. also those lawmakers also don't have interest in going out with underage. And then... <laughs> <laughs> But the problem I see or I feel is that uh, I believe that not all lawmakers we agree that, uh, yeah. that are into pedophiling and all those yeah. stuff as case may be. For those of us who are saying, exactly. let us do that in the house. Because okay. they said, you cannot change the society by yourself. Yes. But by your conduct, you can do that. When exactly. you keep doing a thing straightforward and you keep shouting, you keep shouting, one day they will listen to you. That yes. is the situation we'll find out exactly. Exactly. what is going on. Exactly. All right. Um, um, well, this is really very, very important. <laughs> yes. I, I believe there are same ones there. Okay. They will come together and say, no, let's put a stop to this. Yes. We want a better society. Absolutely, yes. Now